Welcome back to another video with Notion Workflow. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to show entries by most recent time or most recent date. And so this is valuable when you have a lot of related database entries and you just want to see a certain property or certain status for the most recent entry by time. So in this case, we can use a date property, a creation property, a last edited time property, anything that has to do with time so that we can use a formula to show entries by most recent entry. We have a customer database and a tasks database, and they are just related to each other. You only need these three properties to get started. You don't need anything else, and everything you see on the screen is everything you need to get this going. In our case, we're gonna start a let's formula, and that is because we want to define a variable and then manipulate that further to save some time and effort. And I think generally speaking, you want to lean in on let's formulas so that you can define as many variables as you want. Obviously, there's a cap. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but being able to define a variable and reuse it will save you a lot of time in typing because all you, you might have to say is dog instead of a more complex formula that you've defined within the let's formula function. In our case, we'll just title the variable recent, comma, and then a let's formula works where you define the variable name, and then you can define the actual variable, close it out with a comma, for example, and then after that comma, you can specify an output. In our case, I defined recent as five, and I outputted recent, which is five. So just a quick example there to get started. In our case, we want to manipulate the most recent date database entry. We're gonna be using a brand new formula function today. It's gonna to be the find formula that allows you to match an array or a relation to a certain criteria to see if it matches. We're gonna be looking at the task relation as the first criteria that we're gonna be finding from. And then we are going to make sure that the current date that we're finding is equal to the most recent date that is available in the relation. And so in the past, I've used last and sort as formula functions to find the latest and earliest dates. And in this case, because we're talking about the most recent date, we can depend on the last and sort functions and apply that within a mapping formula to match the criteria that we're looking for. Because we're looking at the current date of the related task entry, and we want to find it when it is equal to the most recent date. That is the task that we are looking for. What we can do is map, like we normally do, the tasks, comma, current, dot, date. And we're going to close that up. And it's going to be dot sort to add onto the map variable. And it's going to be the last condition, or the last entry within that mapped array. We're going to close that up with a find function, click done. So if we look at the dates here, notice how update three is June 8th, which is the most recent date in relation to today. So now if I change this to May 28th, June 1st is the most recent entry, and update two shows within the formula function. That was very fast, and so I'm gonna go and repeat this thought process to help you understand. So we are finding the related tasks where the date is equal to the most recent date that we are going to output by using this map and set that equal to the current date that we're finding within tasks. Basically because we've defined recent as this new formula that we nested in this let's formula function, because recent is the output of the let's formula, we see update two as task. Let's say we wanted to go a little further and add Another property that we might also want to show next to the name of this database entry. And so one thing we can do is add a new line within the output by typing in backward slash n, and then after that, adding a new row within the formula output so we can add in another layer of the related database entry. And so let's say we want to maybe automate this process a little bit. What we can do is add a AI summary property within the task database and then have it update. For example, this update provides information about dogs. I did that because that's what I wrote as placeholder text for this entry. I'm going to click on update for all of these. And as you can see, this text is here. 
this text is here. Let's say we also want to output the AI summary of this most recent entry as well. We can reuse the recent property, but because it is now part of the variable that we've defined, we can reference any of the properties that are related to that database entry. Let's use AI summary and add that as an additional output that's after a line break of the name of the most recent task entry, or in this case, updates. So notice how that formula is updated and there is a line break, the clickable element of the entry. So we can verify this by expanding this. And as you can see, that line break is clear. If we wanted to add another one, we can do that. And notice how that line break adds a little more formatting you could say, or spacing between text for that extra little pizzazz within these other database views. We can see the name, any related property that we can define within this formula property. Hope you found this helpful as it's been a while since I've made videos. Like and subscribe. Thanks.